We're in the garage. Just got back from a ride, so what better time to do a three hole oil change. We're gonna start with a 5 8 socket and we're gonna loosen the tranny bolt, drain bolt, and drain it while the engine is warm. On my bike, it's here underneath there. Holy crap, would you look at that? You inspect all your drain plugs and look at, and of course this is magnetic, but it's been a while since this has had oil uh, fluid changes, but look at how much, Ooh. oh my god, that is a lot of stuff. Not necessarily a problem, I mean the bike works fine, but man, wipe all that off, clean that up. The ma if it's on the magnet, it's not it's not in your engine, so that's the good news. Before you open up the drain plug all the way, and there's my oil draining out, uh, before you take out the plug, leave this screwed in. Don't unscrew it. Some people say to unscrew it first. Don't do that. Um, leave it in, and then when you take the plug out, you'll just have a little trickle you won't get oil all over the place. You won't burn your hand if your oil's hot. Then you can open this up. And here's the oil, right? Filler, transmission, same thing. Uh, just wait and then um, open that up second and you'll have a little bit cleaner experience. All right, we got this ready to put back in. We've replaced the washer. We've got some thread sealant on there. I'm using this stuff. I've also got my torque wrench ready at 19 foot-pounds for the spec range on my bike. Yours might be different. Again, this is a 2007 Street Glide. So when it gets time to remove your oil filter here, you can have a wrench. Uh, this one I need to get a, a wrench, clamping style wrench, because it doesn't have the bolt. The, one I, the replacement one I have has a bolt here, so it's a lot easier. So you can use a ratchet. Uh, but... What you want to do is get your wife's favorite dish towels, dish rags, or your husband's, and jam them underneath in this area. Fill it up under there. Put some stuff under there so that when you take it out, um, you don't get oil everywhere. So here's the setup I'm using to remove the oil filter. I've got one of these kind of oil filter wrenches. There's different kinds. You can also use one of these clamping kinds. Uh, which is kind of universal, although they tend to crush the oil filter, so you can use it for removing it, but I wouldn't use it for putting a new one on, unless you don't mind if it gets crushed. Uh, so I have this one, and this will go in there, inside there. This cutout um, can be handy, the cutout section can be handy for working around, you know, items that are in there to get it to fit. Uh, I'm using an oil kit, so it comes with oil, primary which and then I got a little bit more primary because you need a little more than a quart um, and then yeah engine oil you guys know we're gonna uh, put a little bit in the new filter you don't have to soak it but just put a little in there and of course put a little around the gasket uh, on the gasket before you put the put the filter back on with the new filter on and then I have this type which I kind of recommend it makes it really easy to remove these with a ratchet so you don't really you don't need one of these if you have one of these kind of filters, all right? And then we've got our transmission fluid over there. You can look up what kind of fluids you want to get. This was a kit, like I said, and I just had to supplement it with a little bit more um, primary fluid. Here's the old filter. It still has oil in it. So obviously when you take it off, try to keep it upright. Put the uh, oil plug back in, the drain plug. And then I will dump this oil into there and I, you know, collect all my oil into one container and then I take it over to the local Pep Boys and they recycle it. So make sure you always dispose of your oil and fluids properly, especially your fluids properly. Perfect. So make sure you return these directly to the kitchen or wherever you got them before your wife notices or husband.
Okay, draining the primary. Again, you're gonna check for anything unusual. I mean, a little bit of metal is, is usual, is normal, so nothing to be super worried about. Um, and then you're gonna drain that. This again is a 5 8 you can use the same specs, you know, on most of these. On this bike, it's about 19 foot-pounds when to put this back in. Same procedure. One of these is a little, it's stripping out a little bit. I think uh, maybe whoever put this on put it on a little too tight. So I go to loosen it and it's, it's just getting a little mangled. So I got to come up with another plan. Uh, I'm going to see if I can rig this up. If you guys ha don't have one of these, this is an impact screwdriver. You actually hammer it and it twists when you hammer it. Uh, and I've used some of, I used this to get some of the old seized bolts out of the CB750, like this cover, the gear shift, the clutch cover, and some other places on bikes. So if you don't have it, um, these are really handy. I don't know if I can rig this up for that. I don't want to damage it. I mean, this is kind of like a sledgehammer <laughs> version, but I, I have to work on this and then I can come back. Not fun. Not funny. So this is why we use torque wrenches, uh, torque wrenches. So I took the Dremel, I ground down a groove. I used the impact screwdriver to hammer this free which now it is, of course I completely, you know, this is completely ruined, but I got it loose. So let's continue. So I'm back from the Harley dealership and they were very nice and helpful as usual. And while I was there, they had a bunch of derby covers, you know, so beautiful. And so I decided to get none of them I'm going to use my original one because what's wrong with that? Simple is good, right? Okay, so I've got the gasket. I've got new set of uh, Derby Cover T27 screws. Uh, and look at this. Genuine Harley. Made where? What the... You don't see that too much anymore, but it's a Harley, it should be, right? Theoretically. Um, it was recommended to put a little bit of blue Loctite, just a little, on each one of these as I put them in. Although I don't want to, you know, blue's okay. I mean, it's not going to lock, it's just going to keep it from vibrating out. Um, but, you know, I certainly, after this experience of having to finagle one of these uh, bolts out, I didn't want to go through that again. So I'm not, I'm just going to put a tiny bit. We're using, of course, the T27 at 90 foot inches of torque. Um, this spec is like 88 to 108, I think, something like that, 84 to 104. I don't know, you can look it up on my bike. So I'm just going to go for 90 and torque those down. We need 38 ounces. So we've got. Um, 32 in a quart and then I need six more so maybe I'll just measure it I don't know if this has a yeah this one doesn't really have a measuring window Ooh, neither does that oh does it nope sometimes they have little windows um this one I'm just gonna have to measure uh six ounces is three quarters cup so maybe I'll just go that way so we need this plus three quarters cup. I've got the bike on a jack stand, so it's flat. Uh, the only other tool I'm gonna use is this, which is one of these little funnels. There's a little spot right there. So if you have a skinny tipped funnel, you can have that going in there. Just hold it, you know, you can't just like let it sit there. But uh, if you hold it up, you can put the fluid in. It's basically, you put the fluid in until it, till it fills up to that point, but it recommends 38 ounces. So one quart plus six ounces. So as always, when you're tightening down a large area, you wanna tighten in a star pattern. 
So we're going to move top and just go a little. Don't tighten it down to torque. Don't torque it down. We're going to go one, two, and then over here, three, and then over here, right? Four, five. Okay, then you might even do that twice. Don't be in a hurry. Um, you'll have a better torque reading if you go slowly. One, two, three, four, five. And just tighten it down a little, little bit by bit, all right? Finish it out. This one's going at um, 90 inch pounds. Okay, we have the derby cover back on. We've got the passenger footrest back on and cleaned up. Uh, one thing, when you're done torquing, relax your torque wrenches to the lowest setting. Not all the way down, just at zero, all right? Before you put them away and you will extend the life of your wrenches. This is the transmission filler cap. You're gonna need a 3 8 inch Allen and then you're gonna fill it with one quart, 0.95 liters, which is pretty much what's in there. And then here, you can see it says full or add. You just, it needs to be between these two lines in this X area. And then you're gonna check that on the kickstand, on the jiffy stand, and screw this in. And then unscrew it and check the level. So this 2007 Street Glide will take three and a half quarts. So I've got, I put some in the filter already. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put three and a half quarts in and then you can check it both ways on a stand upright or on the ground. I don't know how you guys, if you can read this, but here on the top it says fill full hot on jiffy stand, which is a kickstand. And then the lower level is full hot up upright. And then it says check screwed in. So screw this sucker in, screw the dipstick in, run the engine of course, uh, let it circulate throughout your engine, run it, and then either check it upright or on the stand, you have, you have options there. And then just, you know, add some if you need it. Okay, so I just checked the level after putting three and a half um, quarts in, and I was right there at the top of the jiffy stand marker, which is, you know, almost all the way up the um, almost all the way to the top of the marker that you would use for the straight or level marker or reading, which is what I'm using right now. So I'm good. You just need it to be in there, you know, maybe halfway to full on the scale that they give you on the uh, dipstick. So we're good. That's three and a half quarts. I got a half a quart left over just for topping off. And uh, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Safe riding.